Look what we've got there, the brand new Whoop 5.0. Actually, this is the uh, Whoop MG, the medical grade option. We're gonna go through all of that today. What's up friends, I'm Dave from Chase the Summit and I've been wearing the new Whoop MG or 5.0, whatever you wanna call this thing, for about the past week or so. Not a huge amount of time, but I did learn a lot about it and I wanna share my initial experience with it so far with you today. If you've never heard of the Whoop band and what it is before, it's essentially just a fitness tracker without a screen that you wear on your everyday life uh, to learn more about your everyday health. That's your sleep, your strain, and recovery. And I've already reviewed the Whoop ecosystem several times on this channel before, including the Whoop 3.0 and the 4.0 here. And generally speaking, I did like these devices. There are some quirks about them, but the overall information they give you is pretty valuable. However, this time around with the new 5.0 or MG in this case, uh, the price has gotten a little bit crazy and that will be a big part of the discussion today. Before we get into the weeds on this, I did wanna mention that I purchased this device with my own money. They didn't send it to me. They didn't ask me to make a video. They don't even know this video is being made. So all of the thoughts and opinions I share with you in this video uh, will be unbiased in my opinion on this thing. With that being said, I do have a link in the description down below that will give you like a free month or a discount on a Whoop 5.0 if you decide to use it. That is an affiliate link, full transparency here. Okay. Let's get into it. All right, jumping back to what I said about the Whoop 5.0 and MG here, uh, the pricing has gotten a little bit wild with these new devices. There's a lot of options to choose from and there's a lot of differences between each option. Unlike other devices like the Garmin I'm wearing here, these devices rely on a subscription, which means the device itself is sort of free and then you pay the subscription to get access to the app on your phone. And I'll let you form your own opinions on the subscription model. Personally, I like to pay once for something and then not have to pay for it ongoing, but there are some interesting features with Whoop that might make it worth it for certain people. So diving into the pricing at the lowest level to get into the Whoop 5.0 family, you can go for their one subscription and that will cost you $199 per year. That will get you the same Whoop 5.0 band as the other subscriptions except for the MG. However, that Whoop band comes with a corded charger and uh, that's something we'll talk about in a little bit. On top of that, that one subscription will get you a classic band, the actual strap to the Whoop 5.0, which is one of their cheaper options, and it does come with a lifetime warranty. And with the one subscription, you get all of the basic information that you'd get from a Whoop 3.0 or 4.0. That gives you your sleep insights, your strain, recovery, all of that stuff, along with their personalized coaching and estimated VO2 max, which is a new feature they rolled out not too long ago. Actually, I have a whole video about VO2 max and Whoop. Go check that out. I'll link it somewhere on the screen now. Jumping up to the next tier, which is the peak subscription, will cost you $239 dollars a year. And again, you get the same Whoop 5.0 band you get with the one subscription. However, instead of that corded charger from the cheaper subscription, you also get the wireless power pack for charging your Whoop band. On top of the wireless power pack, you also get a more premium band called the Super Knit band, which I don't have to show you, but it's a slightly higher quality band to go with your Whoop 5.0. But more importantly, with the peak subscription, you also get additional metrics. One being health span, which is sort of your virtual pace of aging. And then you also get access to Whoop's health monitor. And finally, you also get access to Whoop's real-time stress analysis with the Peak subscription. Next up is the most expensive tier in their subscription model called Life. And this will cost you $359 a year. However, the Life subscription actually comes with different hardware along with additional metrics. With the Life subscription, you'll get Whoop's new MG band, which is sort of like the Whoop 5.0 on steroids because it has additional hardware features. You also get the waterproof power pack along with all the features from the Peak subscription, but you also get a Super Knit Lux band, which is their most premium band and which is the one I have here. And I gotta say, it's very comfortable. I've been enjoying wearing this, it really uh, doesn't absorb that much sweat. It does absorb a little, but it does dry out very quickly. I've been running with it. I've been showering with it. Uh, it's a really nice band. And again, on the Life subscription, it also unlocks additional metrics thanks to the MG hardware included. That includes daily blood pressure analysis, which we'll talk about in a little bit, ECG or electrocardiogram built in, and AFib or regular heartbeat detection. And the final thing I wanna mention about pricing is that if you are an existing Whoop 4.0 user, uh, the upgrade isn't free like it was before. If we 
jump back in time to the Whoop 3.0 when it went to the 4.0, it was actually free to get a 4.0. And I thought that was kind of cool that you pay a subscription and you get new hardware as time goes on. This time around, if you are an existing 4.0 user, you can upgrade to the 5.0 or the MG uh, with two different prices. So if you're going from the 4 to the 5.0, it'll cost you $49. And if you wanna go from a 4.0 to the Life or MG device here, this will cost you $79. And during that checkout process, they also supply you with a free uh, gift kit so you can gift your old 4.0 to a friend or family member if they wanna try it out. Okay, that was kind of dense with the pricing, but I just wanted to explain that as best I could. Let's jump back to the hardware. So again, this is the Whoop MG and I bought the uh, shiny silver model with the black band. I forget the actual color name for this, but I gotta say the overall form factor is nearly identical to the Whoop 4.0 on the left here. Pretty much everything from the thickness to the overall dimensions, uh, it's all kind of the same. The edges are a little bit more rounded, so there's not like a sharp edge on any of it, uh, which does make it feel slightly more comfortable to sleep with and live with every day. But in general, if you're used to wearing a Whoop band 4.0, jumping to the 5.0 probably won't be a notable change to you. And just like on the older 4.0, you can also simply tap on the device and get a little status indicator of your battery life on the side here. Flipping the device over, you can see all the sensors on the underside here, and it does look a little bit different compared to the 4.0 on the top here, and that's because this is the Whoop MG model, which does have additional sensors for ECG or electrocardiogram. But I think one of the biggest upgrades to the Whoop 5.0 and the MG device here is that they have additional battery life. On the previous Whoop 4.0, this device had about seven days of battery life, and that was pretty consistent. Now on the new 5.0 and MG, you'll get up to 14 days of battery life. Now that we've talked about subscriptions and the hardware with Whoop MG, I just wanna show you a walkthrough of the Whoop app and the experience that you get with this new hardware. So as you can see, I've got all of my stats from today with my previous night of sleep, my recovery and my strain on the right here. And up on the top right, we've got the Whoop device itself with the battery life of 88%. Scrolling down, we've got some insights from my current health metrics. It's saying that my HRV is significantly elevated compared to previous days. And that's because I've been traveling and all over the place and over training. So as you'll see, some of my health metrics are a little bit concerning, but don't be worried. As we scroll down, you can see some of the unique metrics that you get with the peak and the life subscription. That is your health monitor here and the stress monitor here. So as you can see, if I dive into the health monitor, I've got a variety of metrics. And if any of these metrics were out of whack, it would give me sort of a red flag to tell me to pay attention to that particular metric. So here we've got my heart rate, which it's not showing anything because it's off my body right now, respiratory rate, blood oxygen level, resting heart rate, HRV, and skin temperature, which is still calibrating. Jumping back, we can go into my stress monitor, and this will show you your stress throughout the day. Right now I have low stress, and you can see all of my stress from the previous day, along with my sleeping stress, which was pretty low last night. Scrolling down, we've got an activity log for the current day. So, so far I only have sleep listed here, but if I went on a run or a bike ride or something like that, the Whoop would automatically detect that activity, and that would pop up here and ask me to confirm it. Moving down further, we've got tonight's sleep. So this is a projection on how much sleep I need tonight to make up for my previous days of training and all the travel I've been doing. It's telling me that I should go to bed at around 9.30 and I should wake up at around 6.30, which is hopefully what I plan on doing. Moving down further, we've got my health dashboard and this shows you a variety of metrics for your current day. Heart rate variability, resting heart rate, steps, Heart rate zones four to five and a weekly average. We've got my estimated VO2 max. Again, I have a whole video about that. Go check that out. And my calories burned. And then scrolling all the way to the bottom here, we've got this graph and I love this graph. They lay this out really nice. So this shows your strain recovery in your sleep over the past week. And as you can see, mine looks pretty awful. We've got these red days here and you guessed it, those are days I was traveling, I was out of the house, sleeping in hotels, on trains and airplanes and things like that, so it's pretty out of whack. Now, fortunately, last night I got pretty good sleep, so as you can see, my recovery is all the way up to 91%, where my strain is down low at 4.2, uh, and that's because I haven't gone on my run today, so the strain is relatively low. Now that we've covered the home screen, let's jump into the health dashboard here. So as you can see, this is all of my health metrics, and in here, again, you'll find some unique metrics to the life subscription with the MG band. We have the Whoop Health Span, and this is a 
peak subscription and upwards. So if you have peak or life, you'll get access to this. Health span is basically an estimation of your physical age and not your actual biological age. It takes a bunch of factors into consideration like your HRV, your sleep, your activity every day, and it rolls that all up into giving you sort of your virtual age and how you compare it to your actual age. And the cool thing about this is we'll actually give you a rate of aging based on your fitness level and compare that to your actual rate of aging. Now, unfortunately, I do not have access to this yet because you actually have to wear the Whoop MG band for up to 21 days to unlock it. Uh, when that happens, I'll make a follow-up video if you're interested. Scrolling down, we have the health monitor here. And again, this is sort of like the Vitals app with Apple, where it gives you a little check mark on all of, all of your factors to make sure they're in line. If any of these were out of line, it'll give me a red flag to take a closer look. Moving down further, we have blood pressure insights, and that is a unique feature to the Whoop MG and life subscription. This one's kind of interesting. So as you can see here, my blood pressure today is 124 over 83. Now to get this data, you actually do have to go through a calibration process to make this work. And to do that, you have to have access to a medical grade uh, blood pressure cuff. So I actually had to go out and buy one for the purpose of testing this out. You do have options here. You don't actually have to go out and buy a blood pressure cuff to calibrate this. Uh, if you don't want to, you could go to your local pharmacy and use one of those portable ones they have there or your doctor office or something like that. But to get your calibration, you do need to take three blood pressure measurements and input them into the app to sort of set that baseline for the Whoop to, to move on with. And then after you go through the calibration process, it'll give you an updated blood pressure insight on a daily basis. What's interesting about this is I can't find anywhere online that explains how this actually works and what sensors they're using to, to generate your blood pressure from this little band, but it is pretty interesting. And it's something I'm going to be testing for a long term and taking routine measurements with the blood pressure cuff to see how they compare. But based on this information, you can see my blood pressure today is for some reason a little bit elevated. Uh, we'll see how that changes as time goes on. And if we scroll down here in the blood pressure dashboard, you can also add manual readings to keep that calibration process going to make it more accurate as time goes on. Jumping back to the health panel here, if we scroll down further, you can see there is a heart screener option. Now, if we jump into this, this is for ECG or electrocardiogram. And again, this is unique to that life subscription with the Whoop MG. The ECG capabilities on the Whoop MG are completely manual. It doesn't automatically do this on a daily basis, but to take a new ECG reading, you simply tap this purple button at the top there. You tell it what hand you're wearing it on. And then it'll tell you to hold the little electrodes, which are kind of hard to see, that little matte colored area of the band there uh, with your two fingers. And if I hold that, you'll see on the app, you can see there that the ECG is now reading my heart rate and it will continue to do that for 30 seconds. So based on that latest ECG reading, I have no AFib detected, uh, high heart rate not detected, low heart rate not detected, and normal sinus rhythm. So generally a pretty normal heart rate reading. I'm gonna go ahead and click save and that'll add it to my health dashboard as another data point. And after you've completed an ECG reading with the Whoop MG, you also get this option to share your ECG report. So if you wanna send this to your health professional for analysis, you can do that. Okay, now that we've walked through the app and all of the metrics available, I wanna talk about raw heart rate accuracy from the Whoop MG uh, specifically. Because they're calling this a medical grade device, I had high expectations. Now, if we jump back in time to my review of the Whoop 4.0, I didn't get awesome results from this device initially. However, in a later firmware update, they actually got the heart rate sensor to perform pretty decently, and I have a whole follow-up video about that as well. So to test out raw heart rate accuracy with the Whoop MG, I took it out on a few different runs, and I also paired it to an external device to collect that raw heart rate data without having any interaction with the Whoop app at all. And as usual, to get a baseline of comparison, during those runs, I also wore an ECG chest sensor because these have proven to be very accurate in what I typically use as a baseline of comparison. So here you're looking at a chart between the Whoop MG compared to the Garmin Foreigner 570, which is a relatively new watch, along with the Garmin HRM Pro Plus heart rate chest strap. And as you can see from a high level, the Whoop MG actually performed pretty darn well in this test. The overall trend in the chart pretty much looks similar between the three devices. And there's really no huge deviations on the Whoop MG compared to that ECG sensor. 
However, if we do zoom in a bit, you can see that the Whoop MG did have some spikes along the way where the heart rate jumped for no reason at all, uh, where the other two devices were pretty much in line with each other. And those spikes occurred multiple times throughout this run, but after that spike, it came back down and sort of matched up with the other devices. But in terms of accuracy, I'm actually pretty surprised by the Whoop MG and how well it did in this test. Again, this was a trail run, my arms were moving around a lot, and uh, the Whoop MG did pretty well compared to these other devices. I I do think if it was a more challenging condition, maybe if I was biking on a gravel path or something like that, with a lot of wrist movement, that's where this might struggle. But for steady state workouts like running, it seems to be decent. I should mention though that I'm a sample of one and I'm just showing you my experience so far. And if you're somebody with a tattoo on your wrist or you have darker skin than me or more body fat or different colored hair on your arm, there's a lot of variables that play into heart rate sensor accuracy. So just take this with a grain of salt. Okay, now that we've gone through the subscriptions, the features, the specs, the accuracy, what do I think about the Whoop MG after the few days of using it? I've got sort of a hot take on this one. I think most people out there would be fine with the basic one or peak subscriptions with the Whoop 5.0. With the Life membership, you do get more insights, but just like on smartwatches, I'm not sure how valuable those additional insights are unless you're a very specific user group that knows you need ECG or AFib detection. A lot of people get wrapped up in the specs with smartwatches and boot bands and they want all the things, ECG, AFib, blood pressure, all the things. Uh, but the reality is, unless you know you have a heart problem or you're continually doing ECG checks and you wanna send reports to your doctor, do you really need that on your watch? Yes, it's nice to have, but is it worth the additional money? And then when it comes to the blood pressure analysis on the Whoop MG, the jury's still out on that. Again, I've, I've been testing it with a blood pressure cuff. The results seem somewhat accurate, but I really have no finite way of saying whether or not it's it's good or bad. And because it's still in beta means they're still working on it. So I guess time will tell and how accurate and useful it will be long-term. But again, that goes back to what I just said. Uh, how often do you need to check your blood pressure? Jumping back to the less expensive one or peak subscriptions, you really do get everything you need. You get all the core metrics of the Whoop Band with recovery, strain, and sleep. And I do think the peak plan is probably the best value since it's only $39 more per year and gets you that wireless charging pack, a nicer band, and a few extra metrics like that health span, aging insights, stress tracking, and the health monitor feature. With that said, it's still very expensive, even at that peak tier. And it's hard to recommend the Whoop 5.0 or MG over a dedicated watch like an Apple Watch or a Garmin, for example. But I don't think that's really the target market here. People shopping for a Whoop band want a simple band without a display. Typically someone wearing this really enjoys wearing an analog watch like a Rolex or Omega or something like that. And they don't want an additional watch on their wrist like an Apple Watch or Garmin with a big bright display. And to be honest, I really do like the look and feel of the Whoop Band and the fact that it collects all of the metrics you need without having to wear an additional device. It's very low profile, it gives you a lot of information and the strain, sleep and recovery metrics are super sensitive. Like if you go and have a couple of beers one night, you will absolutely see that in your HRV and on your graphs and everywhere, uh, or if you're starting to get sick, this will also pick that up as well. I also think the Whoop Band at its core excels at being less distracting. If you're somebody who had a smartwatch and you find yourself staring at it all the time when you get an incoming text message or a notification or an email or an Instagram message, it's just overwhelming and you sort of want a digital detox throughout your day, that's where the Whoop Band comes in because it's less obtrusive, it's not in your face, it's just kind of doing its thing in the background. And again, that's sort of the market here. I don't think Whoop Band is trying to replace a smartwatch, they're just doing it a little bit differently. But that's just my opinion and I'm just some guy on YouTube. And that's my initial experience with the Whoop MG after this short amount of time. But now I wanna hear from you in the comments down below. Have you picked up a Whoop 5.0 or MG? Let me know in the comments down below what you think of it so far, what kind of information you're getting from it, or if you're just gonna opt for something like an Apple Watch or a Garmin and uh, get yourself a display along with the band. And then after you're done commenting down there, make sure to go down and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel down below so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. And after that, also check out the description down below because again, I do have a discount code for a Whoop Band. If you decide to go for one, it will get you a discount or a free month or something like that. So click on that. And then after that, check out all of my other social media profiles my Strava account, my Instagram, my threads, my merch store, where you can get a sweet shirt like this, and uh, my podcast as well. 
Okay, friends, that's all I've got for this one. Hopefully you found it helpful and I'll be sure to follow up down the road when I've spent more time with the Whoop Band MG to let you know what I think about it after a longer term. Hopefully you found this useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.